60. And there they go. <laughs> yeah, the wings come out. Now when do they go closed? Here, let's drop back down. There. Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day, because any day one can be on two wheels is a beautiful day and yeah I finally get to ride the new Moto Guzzi. There's a number of firsts that Moto Guzzi has never done before like liquid cooling, 6-axis IMU, quick shifter. Moto Guzzi say that this is what's going to bring them into the future. No more are the archaic old Guzzi's, although I am a fan of the V7, the V9, the V85 TT. Although on the V85TT they need a 6-axis IMU. But I am a fan of those bikes, also the California way back when. I say way back when, it's only been a few years ago. So I am a fan once you understand what Guzzi's are about. And in fact, even the Grizo, which is, you could debate that this was the, the Grizo was the predecessor to this. You know, you could debate that. Um, but great bikes, and I'm a fan of all of them. As long as you understand they're a little behind in tech. They don't have the tech. Now, for the first time, Guzzi says, we've got the tech, too, with this six-axis IMU. Yeah, now, brand new bike has never existed before. First time Guzzi has made this motor. Yeah, it's the, it's the 1042cc liquid cooling, brand new for Guzzi also. It has also shortened the block by four inches than, say, the V85TT. And it has also allowed them to lower it and also put the um, shaft drive lower. So it minimizes the shaft jacking that you're getting. And I can verify that. I only noticed it when I really wrung its neck and it was having some fun. Then you notice it. But other than that, it's not that bad. Now, brand new, how close are the numbers that Guzzi came up with? Let's look at the chart, our sport touring heavyweight chart here. Now, I want a, a little caveat here, guys. All of you guys can pull up this chart or any one of my charts. If you just go to my homepage, click on the community tab and then scroll down. And then you could, so it's always reference. If you got access to the internet, you got access to these numbers. And this is the best I could do. I don't have my own homepage yet. Uh, my own uh, www.motoguzzi or, or not motoguzzi, Scott Warner, nothing to prove or whatever. Yet, maybe I'll look into that this year. Uh, but this is the best I could do. So if you guys ever want to reference any numbers of any bikes, just you know go to my home page click community scroll down pick the bike category you want sport touring adventure naked etc and i will add to these charts as as i ride more and more bikes i will keep updating those now let's get to the numbers where does mozo guzzi fit right in here i have these arranged by weight they're right in the middle there doesn't look too bad does it yeah i have the 1250 rt on there just because i own one and I love that bike so much. It is a Cadillac. Uh, but this is more com competing with the 1250RS or even the 900XR, the Tracer 900GT, KTM GT, the Suzuki, and also the Kawasaki. And yeah, I threw the Ninja H2SX in there just for the fun of it. Because uh, <laughs> it is technically a sport touring machine, but uh, how many of you are going to do sport touring on that bike? But... It, it is, so I threw it in there, just for the fun of it. Also, you guys can make comments on the community tab with these charts, and, and I read them. Most of the time, I read them. And if I and if you say, hey, what about this bike? If I agree with you, I'm like, yep, I'll, I'll stick it on there, and then update it. Boom, done. But as you can see back to this chart, the Mandelo doesn't do too bad with the weight. Power, it's a little low, but... It's the same as the Ducati, the 900XR, uh, what else there? Yeah, the Honda also. But torque is where this bike really uh, 
could use a little more in my humble opinion. Uh, but if you compare it with the ones that are around a leader bike status, it's not doing too bad. You know, because you got the Honda there with 102, it beats that. Uh, and it also beats the 900 XR and the Tracer GT. Well, no, no, it doesn't beat the Tracer GT. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> uh, but also, look at the engine layout. What's interesting in this sport touring group you can have just about any engine layout you want. Configuration, whether it's a V2. We even have two different kinds of V2s, a 90 degree or a 75 degree. Or, uh, of course, Muroguzzi's 90 and, of course, KTM's the 75. And, of course, Ducati is the 90. You can have an inline two, a three, and even fours. And even a boxer down there so yeah bmw by the way is celebrating a hundred years this year of the boxer motor so that motor's been around forever and it's been refined to the t say so what do you mean refined take a look at this next chart for me yeah this is gets into the green area tree huggers i'm adding this data this year to all my charts uh and take a look at the BMW, the, both the boxer motors, 110 gram CO2. And look at the fuel economy, 475. Nothing beats that except for the 900 XR at 4.2 and 99 grams. The closest thing is this bike right here, 4.7, you know, right there. So the two bikes that beat the big boxer, the 1254 cc, is this. And the nine and much smaller bikes. And then you, we also have the how big the tank is and also the range to empty. Theoretical. Now that's going to spark millions of comments, but yeah, I just take what the OEM says is the fuel economy and the tank range. That's our base point. And then from there, pff, you can go. Uh, like the RT, it says 526 kilometers. I think I regularly go 550 on that thing and it's still a quarter tank of gas before I fill it up. So yeah, everything's relative in how you drive. But then there have been other times where I'm cruising the Autobahn at 100 miles an hour or 160 kilometers an hour and then yeah, the fuel economy <laughs> drops in the gas. And then yeah, you don't quite see 500, you see more like 400 kilometers or three, even 350. Uh, but so all the fuel economy is relative, but this is just the base point there, guys. And then you can see I have the models and the predecessor and so on. So and that's why I have the Grizo here as the predecessor. Now, you've seen the numbers with this power torque. How does that powertrain feel on the street? Okay, let's do a roll on. Where is the power at on this thing? See, I'm at four grand now. <laughs> okay, so there, it, it's right there, what about five, it's, yeah, that's, that's it, yeah, okay, I'm trying to be careful here, yeah, four, yeah, that is, there we go, five, it's coming on good, oh, I'm loving that. So if you thrash this thing, wring its neck, it's a lot of fun. I'm liking it, really am. And even even the roll-on, oh, look at that. So you, I hope you can see that, the little red light there, when the sun's to the back on the TFT. That's kind of distracting. I thought there was something wrong there. But yeah, look at that. Huh. Although, I think the KTM does that, too, in the upper left, their 7-inch TFT. On the uh, Super Adventure, I know it does that. But then it does it on all of them. But this roll-on, you don't need the downshift, so... As far as the powertrain and shifting, it is not your traditional Moto Guzzi. This is an all-new transmission. And I'm loving how this thing, oh, it just goes down so easy. There, oh yeah, that, uh, oh, I, I was looking down. 
but to, to, to just lay your foot on it and then blip it, oh, perfect. And then back up, blip, blip, blip. Oh yeah, this thing is awesome. Very little engine noise. Very, they, they, Moto Guzzi did a good job at reducing all engine noise. All you're hearing is the exhaust, really. Now let's watch the wings come out. When do they come out? Now I'm in touring mode, so it should be at 60. And there they go. <laughs> yeah, the wings come out. Now when do they go closed? Here, let's drop back down. There, right at 40, was that? Here, wait, let's go back up to 60. There, now they're out. Now let's see what, what what speed do they close? 50? 40? Let's try 40. There. So they go closed at 40 in Touring and open at 60. Okay, and, and you can also customize it too to, to pick which. There they come out again. <laughs> I gotta watch the road and not look down. Now, this all new chassis, how is this looking? You have adjustable, not fully, for rebound. Uh, and preload, of course, and then we have 130 mil here, 4.32 Brembo's looking nice there on 320s there. And yeah, you have the master cylinder here, and also look at that, the clutch too. That's nice touch. Moto Guzzi has nice touches. And you can see this frame here and the engine, just look at that. It's, that's all you see, very little frame, just the engine hanging there. That looks cool. And then, of course, a two-pot Brembo on the back here because you can see these, these uh, pots are empty here. So you have two pistons on the other side. How does this feel, this chassis feel on the street? This chassis lives for roads like this. That is for sure. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah. This thing loves to be thrown over in a corner. Now, now, rougher roads, yeah, uh, you're, you're going to feel it, but it, it's the same as the Tracer, same as the 900XR, etc. Uh, you, you feel them. It's, it's not a heavyweight like the RT or a, a posh bike like the 1000XR with the dynamic ESA settings that you can play around with. But I imagine with the Ulins or the S, you probably could do pretty good with it. Now, the rear brake is kind of spongy. I couldn't tell that it was going to win, it was going to lock up there, but it's, this is a new bike. But the front brake, yeah, it's, it's a 4.32. So Brembo doesn't make a mistake, and it's a, it's a master cylinder too. And also the clutch is Brembo. So, Moto Guzzi's putting class stuff on this bike, which, yeah, they do. I, I, I do appreciate that. Moto Guzzi always does. Plus, you're, you're paying a premium price for this. So, two thumbs, boom, boom, for this chassis. Continuing on with the rest of this bike, here is where the cases fit in, the hard cases. If you want the top case, you would have to do the rack. And then there's the beautiful shaft drive you see down here. And also the remote right there for the, the, the manual su suspension because this is not the S. If you get the S, which is what, two grand more? Almost, yeah, it is two grand more pretty much. Uh, that's the Ulin's uh, semi-active electronic suspension, which I would opt for the S. Uh, the seat, 815. You can get the high seat or the low seat. I think I would get the high seat. A lot of space here, and I think I would get the high seat because this is just a little low for me. Uh, and also with my foot on the peg, I'm 5'10", 178 centimeters with a 32-inch end seam. So I think I would opt for the high seat. 17-liter tank with 233 kilos when this tank is full. How does that feel, say, in a little village? Uh, let's try this little village where the speed limit is just 30. And here, let's put her in second gear. And as I'm going downhill here, well, this is totally 
I'm in tour, so so the throttle mapping is very gentle. In fact, that's what they they recommend for city riding is is touring mode. And I gotta say, I'm liking it. It's gentle enough. There's no no hidden things that will slap you in the face. Except you got a big fent tractor here that might hit you in the face. And the kid wants to watch the bike. Hello! <laughs> the mom was laughing. The kid was just staring. <laughs> but uh, how is this, this uh, flickability? Yeah, you're going to say a 230 kilo plus machine is flickable. No, I'm not. Uh, but it is a good 13, 14, 15 kilos more than the BMW 900XR and also the Tracer 900. Uh, and I'm not feeling it. I think it's because Moto Guzzi put, thank you, Moto Guzzi put uh, the weight lower with this shorter uh, engine block uh, and also the uh, allows the uh, shaft to be lower going to the back rear wheel. And almost no, there, I felt it for the first time. But if, if you're not looking for the shaft jacking, you won't notice it. Uh, but overall in town, I can see how, yeah, this, this is right in the Sport Touring group. It is one of the little bit heavier bikes, but it doesn't feel it. That, that's what, what I'm amazed at. Coming up to the controls here, pretty standard. Yeah, it looks like Aprilia, right? That's because there's Moto Guzzi and Aprilia are both owned by Piaggio, so the same thing. Mirrors work very well. And I am liking this touch here. Look at that, 1921 Moto Guzzi. Now, this 5-inch TFT. I'm usually not a fan of 5-inch TFTs because they're too small for my eyes. And I have reading glasses now when I read or sit in front of a computer. But I can read and see every single thing here, like 70, 175 kilometers to empty here. I can see everything. It's, it's actually not that bad. Now, if you push and hold this button, now you can get in and change the three settings on here. Your ABS traction control and throttle control too. So you can change those. Now, overall, verdict. I'm loving this machine, guys. Yeah, really am. Uh, if you're looking for something different, uh, and you said, you know what, I've looked at Moto Guzzi's in the past and they've been lethargic, um, agricultural, like a tractor. This one isn't. Uh, the longer I was on it, the more I was liking it. I'm like, wow. The roll-on, the sound, the everything, it sucks you in. But it takes quite a few kilometers. And then, but then once you're in it, once you're in this realm, you feel this character, this passion for motorcycling. And I just want to go, go, go. I don't want to take this back. <laughs> I want to stay out and keep going. I don't want this day to end. I'm loving this machine. I would probably like the S a lot more, even more, more so, because then you could bump between the different suspension settings when you get on rougher roads or nicer roads and so on. Overall, guys, yeah, two thumbs up. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review. As always, guys, and most important on the list, ride safe. And number two, guys, ride like there's nothing to prove. Take care, guys. Cheers.